Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue looking at Buffalo devices but this time I want to move away from Windows Storage Server and I want to focus on another part of the network. When Buffalo asked me to look over some of this stuff and give my honest opinions, included with all of these devices was that switch, the BSMP2008. Now I have mentioned this on the channel before because I thought, I, even then, and I still do now, that this is still the best priced 10 GBE switch right now. Now, not in terms of all switches, of course, there are caveats and provisos. For example, this is the, for me, the most affordable hardware versus value managed eight port 10G base T switch. And what that means in real terms is one, managed, it means it has a user interface where you can go into it and assign port priorities and protection. It covers, it's an eight port, so it can support up to eight devices. It can support 10G base T, which means it can support um, the copper variant of 10GBE, and also it's backwards compatible with standard 1GBE RJ45, which means you can hybrid all of your devices between 10 and 1GBE as needed and grow them all over time. And most of all, the fact that it only costs around 350 to 400 quid without the VAT or your local tax. That is a frankly astonishing cost for a very user-friendly device. So what I wanted to do, after talking about it before, and a number of you kept asking, like, am I being paid to say this? And I'm really not. And what I want to talk about is the user interface of this switch. Because when you can make choosing the right switch, one of the main reasons people go for a managed switch is for that word managed or web managed or accessible. Now you could have gone for a 10 GBE dumb switch. You could have gone for a switch that has no brain and doesn't assign port priority. <clears throat> a classic example would be, would be that QNAP switch, the QSW. But the shortfalls of that is <clears throat> that switch, because you lack the way to control your network and ultimately protect yourself and assign priority, you are opening yourself up to a few difficulties and problems down the line. And given that that switch I just mentioned, the 8-port switch, costs the same as this switch, it seems silly to pay for something that's stupider when you could go for a switch like this. But rather than talk any more about this, let's take a good look at the user interface. So if we get rid of the NAS Navigator from our previous video, what we need is the business switch configuration tool. There are, there are other means to access a switch, but this is the one that they uh, Buffalo themselves do recommend quite highly. You install this application for free, you click next, and it will search your local area network for the switch that you've connected to. And boom, there it is. Obviously, if it doesn't find it, there are other means to find the switch, other ways in which you can find a switch if you're in difficulty on the LAN, but we found it, we'll double click. And this gives us the ability to either change the IP address or go straight into it. And that's what we're going to do. Make our way into the switch. Let's full screen this, shall we? Go into it. So as it said, the login by default. And we hold on in. <clears throat> and here we have it. And this is our user interface. Now, for those that have utilized other brands, TP, Link, Netgear, that sort of thing, they've got their own user interfaces, don't get me wrong. But this is still, for me, one of the most user friendly. Like all of them, it's taken the trouble to separate uh, different categories like they have up here. For system information, we learn more about our device. And of course, basic, advanced, and more. But the difference between them is, although this uses a web interface, this has absolutely no slowdown. When I used the Netgear Q Genie, I believe it was called, or Net Genie from Netgear, it wasn't very good. The Netgear software was not very good. It didn't refresh very well. And the only system I ever used that software on where it was in any way responsive was the Nighthawk X10. And that is an insanely powerful router that costs a substantial amount of money for a router. That is not what you want to have to pay just to be able to flick through options without a lag. But coming back to this software. So it's accessible, as you can see, via your web browser. And I know we're using Windows 10. Boo. Um, but here we go, we look at the system information, it gives us real time information about our device and of course we can download information if we want or we can log out as we so choose. If we download, let's see what we download here and this is where we can download new um, firmware updates for this device. So we can, the latest firmware I believe I've already got installed but we should check later on. We carry on, we go into the basic options, and again, this is where we can name the switch. We can give it locational information. Not that that's going to be hugely important, but you can do that. So we could put location, Mars, and we could say contact me. 
So we can update these very easily, boom, applied. IP settings are where we can uh, change the way IPs are assigned, both for the switch and externally. So we can assign new ranges with which to work but we're within. And of course you can assign dynamic or static IPs as you see fit, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, virtual LAN, of course, is where you want to map together different networks and create one super network that conglomerates all of those different networks. And of course, you've got port control on those. MAC addresses is where you want to assign um, kind of yes and no to different MAC addresses that are connected to your device or assign um, an identity in places. Port settings are where, of course, a number of you are going to buy a smart switch because everything from gaming to having advanced networks of virtual machines, a lot of time having port forwarding and port access is very important indeed. And there's more information on this later in the video. Um, speed and setting mode, uh, mode is where we can assign ports, put them together, assign different levels of connectivity. We can actually decide that they can only have a certain level of connectivity. So even though this is a 10 uh, gigabit, uh, gigabit switch, we can say port one will only have a smaller. So we can assign different varying levels of access and data flow per port. So you can make sure that certain ports have always got priority over others. System security, of course, is when you can start setting up administrative access points on this NAS. So you can decide that only certain people have access to this uh, user interface that you're looking at here by changing the login credentials and obviously they're set to default at the moment. We go to the advanced settings, we can look at QoS and again, I would be lying if I said I knew what QoS is, but it, to me, it's still a lovely little setting there that I encourage a number of you to look up. If we look up on the side, QoS, quality of service, of course, but how this controls quality of service, I think is going to make a big difference to you, the end user. And because again, it's such a variable um, thing that you could set up that it's very hard for me to say which is the best. Now, DDoS attack prevention, anyone that works in a business setting where you've got lots of usernames or you have an open portal website, which encourages users to come to your website and log in, you can be open to a DDoS attack. That's when your website is bombarded with commands and during that time, it can break your website or give them an opening to get into your website and extract information. And one of the weak, one of the access points you want to have as big a wall as possible is your switch. Um, port trunking, of course, or link aggregation. It comes under very different names, but they all mean the same thing. The ability of trunking certain ports together and combining them to create one port that has um, a, that enables. Two, um, two connections into one device to effectively double, quadruple, and more the connectivity. Traffic control, another one where we can assign different levels of con um, access and more to different ports. Mirroring is if we want to port mirror, of course. And lastly, everything else to do with the status of connected routers and other devices. But that's really it. Everything else is more about the management of this device as you would expect from any hardware updating, firmware, backing up, restarting, return to factory settings. There are some interesting stuff here as well. The fact that we can look at real-time statistics about different ports and we can find out more about data packets that have been exchanged and sent by a different port. So we can see if there's a certain device on your network, if you've got a huge amount of bandwidth being consumed, you can find out which port is the one consuming it. And of course, network diagnostic tools to get real-time information about our device. But that's really it. That's how user-friendly this is. I mean, with the exception of the quality of service, nothing here should be that hard for you to get your head around. And moreover, not, and there should be no real learning curve to help you learn more about um, 10 GBE and integrating 10 GBE into your network. Once again, you don't have to go for a smart switch, you can go for a brainless switch. But I can tell you right now that 85% of everything we've discussed so far will not be open to you. And if you are going to be taking 10 GBE seriously for your business as a photo video editor, as a virtual uh, virtualized server, or utilizing virtual machines, a managed server is important. And that's why I'm so impressed by this device. Now, do check out my videos on the Buffalo Windows Storage Server devices. Do check out uh, further information on different NASs, be they Windows Storage Server or not. And otherwise, make sure you grab your NAS from span.com. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.